There we go. Right. Um, welcome everyone to this uh, session today. So the uh, the agenda for today is uh, the structure of the call uh, today would be we go through kind of an introduction for about 15 minutes. Then we have two special guests today. And one is Yuchiro and the other one is Sebastian. Uh, and then we will have plenty of time for, for questions uh, and we have uh, all uh, um, experienced speakers that who can answer your, your question. Uh, but before going to our special guest, I want, just want to give the floor to the, to the program team uh, who would be sharing kind of the logistics of the, um, of the presentation with the EuroPython. Who wants to go first from the program team? All right, perfect. Um, I can probably go ahead. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm VB, and uh, I, along with Artur. Artur, if you can unmute yourself and say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Artur. On cue. All right. Uh, so we um, um, we are uh, along with uh, a huge array of group of um, um, you know volunteers. Some of which are here, like Rodrigo and um, uh, Cyril and um, you know Tiffanis and, and and so on and so forth. And um, of course Diego. Um, all of us are sort of responsible for making sure that we have a fantastic program. And um, the program, of course, is uh, built by all of you um, and a lot more of you who are not here. <laughs> Uh, and so on. Um, so um, we're just gonna keep it like short and chill. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly like walk you through like how uh, the D-Day would look like for you all. Uh, so, so the day when you present your talk, how that would look like for you all. Um, um, so essentially um, your talk would, would either be of 30 minutes or 45 minutes, right? This time is inclusive of Q&A. Uh, this is also inclusive of your introduction time and so on. So essentially you get, you get um, you know, 30 or 45 minutes, depending on whatever slot we're able to sort of provide to you, or like you know, duration we're able to pro you we're, we're able to provide to you. Um, you're gonna have uh, like that much duration, inclusive of introduction and Q and A. Um, and um, in terms of like what devices you can use to present, um, we're flexible. We're flexible with any device uh, as long as it is widely available. So Macs, Windows, Linux, so on and so forth, you can present through through any of those and, and we'll, we'll more often than not, we'll have, a, we'll have an adapter for it. But if it's a special device, we recommend you to carry an adapter, which, um, which would work with a reasonably sound projector to carry with you, right? Or just let us know ahead of time, um, just send us an email at program at the rate and, and we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll work something out. Um, in terms of the actual presentation, uh, the program team and like the Europython organizers have zero oversight in terms of what you present. And we, we take huge pride in that. We do not want to sort of moderate what you present. We do not want to, you know, um, um, we do not want to have like any say in what you present. Um, so long as what you present abides by the code of conduct, which by the way, you agree to when you, you know, um, sort of purchase your speaker ticket, which we, which you would get a link for um, in the next one or two weeks, um, sooner rather than later. Um, right, and uh, then in terms of like the actual presentation that you present, um, you know, so long as you're able to present, so you're, you're using a software, you know, which is um, like Google Docs or, you know, uh, I don't know, PowerPoint presentation, PDF, all of those should work out. And um, um, in terms of like room sizes and so on, uh, like assume, um, you know, prepare for something like 60 to 180 people in your room, um, you know, so that's the kind of like room sizes we have of course like uh, you know what room you would actually present in would differ from uh from talk to talk and what kind of avail availability we have during the schedule at that point in time but you know at an average like preparing for 100 people in your uh presentation um is something that you should um that you should sort of prepare for um that's it. Uh, to like after the after your sort of talk is done, and you know once the conference is done, uh, a lot of attendees do ask for presentation. 
uh, like the presentation that you present. So we do recommend sort of uploading your, you know, PowerPoint presentation, GitHub repository, whatever it, it may be, um, over to pre-talks. Um, afterwards, there is an option to it, and we'll of course send you an email afterwards as well. Uh, but that's pretty much it um, for you know um, any specific queries and so on. Feel free to send an email at program at the rate europython dot eu, and one of us from the team would get back to you. Um, before we head over to Q and A, um, Arthur or Diego or Rodrigo, would you like to add um, something? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, going to back to the timing thing. So you mentioned 30 or 45, there will be like a five minute break or a lunch break or a coffee break after your talk. So there will be time to switch. That's not included in that 30 to 45 minutes. Slot. That 30 or 45 minutes slot is only the talk plus the Q&A. Oh yeah, and, and, and which reminds me that if you have a, like, so 15 minutes before the talk, we expect you to be uh, near the room that you're supposed to present. Um, and essentially there will be a room volunteer always present there uh, who would be responsible for making sure that you have a great experience presenting and you know in case you have any issues then they will make sure that we have um, you know uh, that that we are able to resolve whatever issue you have as soon as possible so um, like we won't just like leave you to present we will like we will always be, be there with you every step of your presentation um, so don't worry about that. Yes, and the session chairs will keep track of the timing. So in case you run out, there will be somebody in the room to let you know that you run out of time. Uh, yes, I think it's very important. Vicky, <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, uh, I don't know if you mentioned or not that all the record, uh, all the talks and presentation will be recorded because like every year, then we publish uh, these on our channel on YouTube as well yes and that's I, I think that's also part of the the um waiver that everyone signs at this like once they when they submit their cfp that they're okay with us recording and then uh, later on publishing um their talk on our youtube channel as well so yeah Great. all right if there is uh, nothing else from the program team i guess if you have questions specifically to the logistics of uh, uh, delivering the presentation, I think now is your time because we have uh, everyone from the program team, you have the right people to ask them. And actually, uh, while you're thinking, there is one in, in the chat from Sebastian. Uh, do you expect any issues with uh, HD, HDCP, HDMI in combination with MacBooks? Um, um uh I just know HDMI. I don't know what HDS yeah. HDCP means. Uh, but I like HDMI works uh, and it's safe to assume HDMI works. Um, I think uh, I can answer this question okay. probably a bit better. Uh, so yes, we do sometimes expect problems with HDMI or even um sometimes with proper adapters, whether it's Apple specific or other adapters, sometimes we do have these problems, especially the newer ones. Um, mostly because um, the resolution sometimes is custom and um, sometimes the hertz is also custom. So I think if you have a fairly new MacBook, it is a good idea to try to find people to test as soon as possible when you arrive at the venue. And we will try our best to also prepare a speaker ready room um, in which we will try to have a screen for you there. Um, even if the screen would not be identical to the one um, that we have at the projector, it is still approximation of the text. So we really encourage you to use that if we can make that happen. All right, thanks Raquel. Any other question for the program team? Uh, there is one. Uh, yeah, feel free to unmute. Yes. Yeah. Hi, hi. I'm here as uh, an expert slash mentor, but I see we have someone first time uh, speakers who are workshop conductors. And you mentioned that you will be recording the sessions of talks, but we are not recording workshops and poster sessions, right? Just to be clear. 
Yeah, so we we do not record um, tutorials or um, uh, as well as uh, sorry, the sun's just coming down. So anyway, ignore that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so so we do not um, record tutorials and we do not record posters. All talks are um, are recorded and also the open spaces are not recorded. Sorry. Correct. Good point. Right, uh, I think we can move on. But anyway, if you have uh, a question for the program team at any time, uh, there is you can drop an email to program at europython.eu, and we will do our best to reply your uh, to mm, reply to your request. Right, so I think we can move on. So I just want to thank all the mentors uh, that um, who kind of helped us to run these uh mentorship program so the mentors uh, i see that uh, there are a few mentors here in this call thanks a lot for your uh, help for your effort to guide first time speakers through one to ones through the cfp and all these uh all the way along can i say so thanks for that this uh program couldn't uh couldn't happen without your help and that's in a way so and feel free to participate uh, also in the in today's um, conversation. Right. So the first um, uh, guest speaker is uh, Yu Chiro, um, who oh. is uh, sharing with us. Uh, uh, Yu uh, uh, uh participated last year to the mentorship program so who and this year is uh, sharing with us his experience and uh of uh yes and uh, his feedback from from last year each year yes yours. okay um <laughs> well uh, thank you for our, our welcoming introduction and uh, uh nice nice to meet you hello everyone i'm usual i was the I attended the last year the Your Python conference as a first time speaker, and I also took part in the mentor, uh, first first time speaker mentorship and this workshop also. And I at, at first I want to strongly say that the this first tip, uh, first time speakers workshop and mentorship both are so great opportunity for first time speakers like uh, like newbies like me to you know get involved into community and also of course to you know prepare and improve our uh, talk personal talks so much so you know i want to say that you are now attending the so great opportunity uh, to to make your uh, talk so much great and let me uh share some of my personal experience last year and that also include may include some um hints or advices that might uh, be helpful for you to well actually i you know dr drastically imp changed my talk after i attended this uh, workshop last year and got some so much advices from the program teams for example i you know well switched the last slide into the floor <laughs> foremost or some like that kind of a storyline stuff also and uh i also changed all the color scheme of the my slides from like uh especially the code cold blocks with dark mode into light mode just uh advice from probably it was advice from vb and um i think one of the biggest issues discussed in this workshop will be uh live coding or live demo i think this will be you know the huge topic too it's this workshop too like uh, discussed it soon i think and but to be honest i was well anti-example of the of this topic well many people suggested the recommended the first time speakers not to do that and that advice actually scared me but i actually decided to do live coding at the at last because my talk was about my always oh, that makes coding easier so like i thought that live code should also should be should have been you know made easier just by my technology so it was a great chance 
a great opportunity for me to show that kind of a feature of that project. And I also, of course, uh, prepared two or three backup plans, of course. So, well, let me uh, let us discuss about this topic later soon. But my message is that uh, you have to think about just avoid uh, live coding at first, but there is some flexibility or some room that you can do if you have enough confidence and reasons and enough backup plans. And at, learn, at last, well, I also uh, recommend you to, to talk with the organizers or some mentors from this opportunity, including mentorship program or workshop, because not only uh, not only for your improvement, but also be to to be involved into the community, because this is a great opportunity to talk with the people who are already familiar with the community. So you know, this is a great introduction for like a pe first time attendees like us to you know get familiar with uh, existing community members and it makes us easier to say hello at the first morning of the conference well so yeah that's it uh, thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to share my short story <laughs> thank you thanks you Shiro no this was uh, very insightful and useful um there is a, actually we have a, a question from Rodrigo it's not a question. My raising uh, my hand is a is me requesting to to say something. Oh, is it fine? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go for it. I thought that you, Yuchiro. That's how you say your name. Yuchiro? Yes. That's right. yeah. Yes. I think Yuchiro Yuchiro's um, story and advice was a great way to start, because they said that people usually say first time speakers shouldn't do live demos and you should do it anyway so that's just the the thing that's very important for all of you today here is that the things we are going to say and the experiences we are going to share they don't necessarily apply exactly the same to you right so if it works for me it doesn't mean it's going to work for you and so i think this is just a great way of starting this workshop actually so take now take note of the tips but then make sure they work for you uh, this is a very, very excellent point, Rodrigo. Th thanks for uh, for sharing that. Yes, you're right. Um, now, um, if you don't, uh, if there is uh, no other point raised, I would go to invite a second guest here, Sebastian. So I think uh, we, with the invite, we shared with all of you uh, an article uh, written by Sebastian, how to make a, a great conference talk, uh, which is a very long uh, article. So thanks Sebastian for putting all these excellent tips all together uh, from basically on, from why we need to, uh, what are the benefits to uh, speaking in a conference until basically the day of the presentation, deliver the presentation, interacting with the audience and the Q&A. So it covers everything, every aspect. So if you haven't read it yet, I strongly suggest to, uh, to read it. And um, I think uh, with Sebastian, we kind of, uh, instead of uh, Sebastian talking through kind of the this article and repeating the points he made, uh, Again, I think we, uh, I think we prefer to ask questions to Sebastian, right? So I think uh, Sebastian, do you, before we go into the question, do you want to share anything with us? Um, first of all, thank you very much for the kind words. I'm I'm really happy that you enjoyed the article. Um, no, as you said, um, let's let's have a talk about some some points from this article because there's like too much stuff, and I don't even know what what I should focus on. All right, cool. Yes, let, let, let's let's take this approach. Um, I think uh, one of the questions I have is uh, among, among the key benefits you are mentioning in the post, 
uh, there is a recognition networking and uh, kind of the possibility of getting invited in uh, other conferences because of yes you you've been recognized especially if you uh, if the talks are recorded then people can watch the recording afterwards and that can be shared with other friends and colleagues and stuff and uh, as these might be benefits that will come with time of course uh, it's not that you start presenting and then all the all of a sudden <laughs> you have a huge network uh, of people uh, recognition but uh, can you identify uh, uh, other like more short-term benefits um so i would say like one of the best short-term benefits is that being a speaker is like an excellent uh, icebreaker for the conversation because like when i was going to my first conferences i unless I went with some people I knew before, it was like really hard to like talk with strangers because like I'm introvert, so that that's not easy. And then when you have, when you're a speaker and people like see you have a speaker on your badge, they will ask you, hey, what, what are you going to talk about? Or what did you talk about? So you have, people will just approach you and ask you about if, if you're in a circle of people. So that's one thing. And for example, um, once you finish a talk, uh, you will always, well, at least I always have like some people who like come and ask you questions afterwards. So you know that you have more people who are interested in your topic and you can just hang out with them and like discuss what what, what was the topic of your presentation. So you have someone to talk about at least one thing that interests both of you, which is like your presentation. So I would say that that's for me one of the really nice benefits. And like maybe in terms of like more more altruistic benefits i would say this is also like a way of you to giving back to the community because for example for me working after hours on open source software this just this just never worked for me so i kind of treat my talks as like a way of contributing to the python community so like think of it like if it wasn't for all of you who are here and who are giving talks this conference wouldn't be uh, taking place so i think you should feel good about all the hard work that you're putting into your presentation and that that's that's something to you can be proud of yeah not very good point yeah carry on carry on yeah i mean th those are two main things that comes to my mind no that that's great that's great i think uh if i kind of add uh, to another very very short term benefit is is the feeling that you have once as soon as you finish your presentation it's uh, it's like I did it right so it's that that good feeling that basically all the your effort that you put in the presentation it paid off right and say okay this is it's not the end there is 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 the start of a journey right so that actually will bring you more kind of recognition at working all the things all the long-term benefits that you you just said it is a fascinating feeling yeah I love yeah. it um, Elena, yes, carry on. Can I just say one thing? Uh, I remember when I was the first time speaker and uh, people from my community did their first talks. Uh, during that networking session after the talk, when people come and ask your questions, you're actually getting so many ideas of future talks and you're so encouraged to continue to contribute to the uh, community to apply for the future conferences. So I think yeah, motivation to keep uh, going with the talks. It's also uh, the thing that is happening to uh, mostly everyone after their first talk. Yes, very, very true. Thanks a lot for, for sharing that. Let's go. Uh, I have a list of other questions. Uh, so, Sebastian, why, while you are debunking, debunking myths or not submitting a conference, um you are mentioning the stress that one speaker might have do you have any specific uh tricks or advice about having less stress during the talk and this is a hot topic for everyone <laughs> it is um yeah this is a very good question and i'm afraid i do not have like a magic trick for the stress like sorry sorry guys um i was like at the beginning when i was presenting some years ago i was like looking for some tips to manage stress and there are like some articles that you can find online about like i don't know uh, one was about like washing your forearms with cold water to like calm you down or like probably some breathing exercise so maybe you can like google that and and try it 
Uh, but for example, what works for me um, on the day of a conference, because like initially when I was first speaking, I was like getting stressed since the morning. So I like, couldn't eat breakfast because I was getting stressed since I woke up. So what worked for me was like trying to keep my mind distracted until the, my presentation comes. So I usually like try to hang out with people and like talk with them about something and that drives, takes my attention away from the fact that I will have to be giving a presentation and that way I, I'm like more relaxed throughout the day. And I also noticed like uh, using your phone to distract yourself doesn't really work that way because then you start thinking and then you think about your talk. So it really has to be people. And if you like don't know anyone, you can, for example, go to the place where there are like, the sponsor booths and like you can talk with people there. People are will be like super happy to talk with you. And it's not even about like hiring. You can, they have like engineers there so you can talk about whatever. So that's one way to get you distracted until the time of your conference, uh, of your presentation. Uh, but in terms of like getting stressed during your talk, um, this I haven't figured out yet. And I mean, this is, this is because uh, for example, the first presentation I was ever giving, like my legs were literally, literally shaking that I had to hold the podium to like, just not lose my balance. So that was interesting feeling. I would say, um, and I think one advice here I would have is to like try to maybe have a more, if you're using speaker notes, try to have like a detailed speaker notes, because like if you get like completely stressed and you blank out, worst case, you can like fall back to reading your uh, speaker notes. And I mean, it won't be the most entertaining talk because it will feel like a lecture, but at least you will deliver it. I mean, you are putting so much effort into preparing your talk. So it would be a pity if you like blank out and you forget some talking points. So if you're worried that you will get stressed and forget things, just write things down. And like, you don't have to use those speaker notes, but just like have them a bit more detailed as your backup plan. And one more thing, uh, for example, when you get, when you're there on the stage and you get stressed, you might not notice that, but you start speaking fast. Like now I'm speaking faster than I usually speak. And uh, I think like one of the key things here is to actually realize that you start speaking fast because for you, um, you already know the content of your presentation, like the back of your hand, like you rehearse, you, you rehearse it like 10, 15 times. So for you, this is nothing new and you're kind of like spewing words just to try to go through the presentation. But if you have like a lot of new concepts and you're tossing it at your audience, it, they kind of need time to digest it. So just like pay attention to your pace and like try to slow down, try to like take a sip of water, try, try to like have a deep breath or something like that. Like, I mean, it's perfectly fine to have long pauses during your presentation. Like people won't notice if you like blank out and you have to like think about something, people are perfectly fine with that. This is not something that people will notice and be uncomfortable with. And oh, one last thing. So, um, like in general, to deal with, to, to learn how to deal with stress better, you just have to talk more in front of the audience. That's kind of obvious. Um, but like some different kind of pe different people get stressed in front of different audiences. So for example, for me, uh, I'm perfectly fine talking with, uh, in front of my team or talking at work or people that I know that, that, that is not a problem, but if I have to speak in front of strangers, that stress me out. And some people are like completely opposite. They can like go in front of 1000 people and just like one, one the fantastic presentation, they don't get stressed. But when they have to present something at work, that's when they get stressed. So just be aware of that. Cause if you like practicing your talk in front of your colleagues at work, everything is fine. But then you stand in front of strangers, you get stressed. So maybe like try to go to some local meetup or something like that just to have a feeling of how it is speaking in front of the audience that you don't know. Yeah, that's 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 it from my side. And thanks about no, this is these are very valid uh, points, and uh, actually this is the very line with what Rodrigo said earlier. I mean, uh, there are, there is no magic trick of of, of uh, that works for everyone. So you need to find out your own tricks to kind of lower the stress before in your presentation and what it works for you might not work for other people. So I think it's uh, it's kind of a, a trial and error thing. So try your first presentation and the second one, the third one, they will go 
better and better and better. But uh, I think what I want to add, I think the stress of delivering a presentation will never go away, in my opinion, because even talking with a very experienced people who delivered keynotes and uh, to a large audience, people get stressed. That's it. <laughs> this is this is normal. It's part of the game. <laughs> so I don't think the goal here is to not to be stressed, but is to manage the stress in a way that you can deliver a good presentation. So I think that's a, a point I wanted to make. Uh, Valerie raised uh, the hand, so please commute yourself. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. So uh, I have uh, a few tips uh, because I get stressed a lot <laughs> when I'm going to uh, present on a, on a conference. And uh, one is uh, definitely related to what Sebastian said. And it's to try to practice before, right? And you can practice in many different ways. One could be um, giving the talk like for yourself, like just uh, you're alone in a room and you just go into the full presentation you present on your screen and you start talking, you know, like you're in the front of uh, the audience. Uh, another way is to actually record it so you can after uh, check it out and sometimes we can also uh, kind of improve some some details um, and then it's also very very useful to uh, give the talk into into a um, meetup so if you uh, can um, uh, propose your talk to the local uh, meetup or to the closest meetup that you have or, or sometimes online also works, um, then you can also practice there. And sometimes in my case, I, I give the talk in a meetup and I get also feedback from the people. So that's very, very helpful also. And, um, and the other tip is that um, it happened to me actually in a PyCon that uh, I, I went to the, to the prepare uh, room to the preparation room for the for the speakers but like really close to the time when I was going to speak so when I arrived um, there was a little bit of uh, like a, a, a mess you know like everybody was rushing so we uh, had to run like literally run to the salon because it was really, really far away in the convention center. <laughs> so we ran to the place where I had to give the, the talk and, uh, and that stressed me a lot more. So what I learned from that was to arrive early to the preparation room and to have everything ready like early so I could go peacefully to the, <laughs> to the presentation place and be more calm. And that's it. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, very good point. Because actually, when you run, actually, then you, when you run, you are out of breath. So you are doing this, and then then if you add the stress on top of it, is uh, it's not a very nice combination, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Valerie, for sharing your tips. Um. Yes. Uh. Kali Kalian. Hang on. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think uh, Sebastian and Valeria has, I think, pretty much covered a majority of the stress points, I believe, because uh, those are like, you know, major key points in terms of like, you know, handling stress during the conference or a talk. A uh, couple of like, you know, points which I personally uh, like, you know, keep a tab on things, you know, in order to relieve stress is like, you know, uh, first one is like, you know, I basically visualize success. Uh, I, uh, so to put it in a simple way, what I uh, used to do is like, you know, uh, I visualize myself that, you know, I have delivered a very successful talk and I got a very positive responses. So that thing will really help me to uh, get out of the stress. And, you know, it also personally boosts my self-confidence and, you know, self-assurance. So that's how one uh, I personally follow. And, you know, that's, that's so far helped me in terms of, you know, uh, uh, avoiding stress during the talk. 
uh, and again uh, and uh, other thing which i also uh, follow is like you know i put up some backup plans because you know uh, while giving your presentations right you know so definitely you'll encounter a lot of technical glitches or interruptions during your talk right so it's always you know you should be you know stay flexible uh, to adapting such things in order to avoid stress so it's always like you know you good good to keep a backup plan or alternative approaches in mind so that you know so that you know you can easily manage and you know you can deliver your talk successfully you know without taking too much stress on such circumstances so these are some of the points which i like to share thanks Harry. yes very excellent point thanks for sharing with uh, with us right so let's uh let's move on to the ne next question um so sebastian uh, many people say that in order to make an effective uh, talk, you need to engage with the audience. Uh, but would it would this be possible if you create a script, uh, kind of a detailed script for the presentation? Are you that's a, your in your post? That's a good question. Um, I would say yes, because like you can ask audience questions and you can like put the script uh, questions in your script i mean you don't necessarily have to go by the script i mean you can have it more detail less detail but like you can i see no reason why you should, why you wouldn't be able to like um have some interaction with the audience if you were using a script you can ask questions you can do raise of hands show and so on so everything that you can do if you like improvising without speaker notes you can perfectly fine do uh, with a script except that if you have a script you will actually remember to do those things so yeah it, i see the point that it feels a bit uh, less natural if people go by the script but i i don't buy this argument because you don't have to write your script in like a formal way you can write your script the way you're speaking and or you can like have it written in a formal way and speak it le less formally so i would say no it, it, it's not like a if you have a script and you just focus on your script and you don't interact with the audience yeah no i agree with you also uh actually i i have a kind of a counterpoint on, on the um uh, engaging with the audience I would say I mean uh, it's like uh, everything in life where you learn a new thing you you cannot master that thing straight away right so so the maybe the engagement with audience will come with time uh, as soon as you get more experience in talking and you feel more confident that you can start introducing the engagement with the audience but maybe for the first times or for the first uh, times that you talk to uh, in a uh, kind of in a in a conference uh, or public speaking, just focus on the delivery presentation. Just get confident on what are your abilities, how you deliver the presentation, what are your limits. Get know yourself in a context where you are under stress, because then if you try to overdo, then it might not be kind of the it might not have the same effect, right? So uh, it's like in, uh, that actually could be counter productive for your presentation so i think this is uh my point try to understand your limits before going the, a step uh forward and we have to uh to hands raised i don't know i i didn't know i don't know who raised first so sebastian oh okay first. yes so I think there's a bit of a middle ground between crowd interaction and keeping to your script. It's something that I learned in a lot of the, the speaker trainings that I followed, is you can ask your audience questions without actually expecting them to answer. There are these kind of questions that 90%, 95% of the, the audience will say yes to, uh, but they will engage them again into your conversation. So if you're making a point of if you have, or if you have an opinion, you can state something like a question that you know nearly everyone in the audience will agree to or maybe everyone will disagree with doesn't really matter but that just uh reactivates that that audience and i i agree with uh, diego that when you're just starting out when your presentation and you're really uh, focused on your presentation itself you might not have the, the cognitive capacity or uh, management skills to really manage the audience 
uh, I get really stressed from interacting with the audience because then things suddenly go off plan. So I tend to not do it. Um, um, but yeah, you can definitely ask questions without actually expecting people to answer them and then they can just be part of your script, but they will make them think and reactivate again. Thanks, Sebastian. Yes, very good points. Um, Rodrigo? They say, they say great minds think alike, right? Because I was also going to say that you can just ask questions to which you already know the answer. And another thing you can do is you can make jokes. Right, and it doesn't matter if they're bad jokes. Uh, I mean, the note the audience will notice, but I always make bad jokes, and people just laugh out of pity, and it works well. So you can do that sort of thing. You know, it's 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 going to be just fine, and you can you can either wing it if you have that type of humor in you, or you can script your jokes. So, but don't make them sound fake. So if you script your jokes, just practice that they sound natural. Otherwise, it's going to be people will notice, but yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rodrigo, for um, your points. Is there anyone else uh, who wants to, uh, yes, carry on, Alena? Yeah, maybe about the engagement. Actually, when I'm preparing my talk, I kind of feel like all the engagement is actually scripted <laughs> because I feel more comfortable like this. Uh, for first time speakers, I would aim for the most, um, easy things like small warm up activity in the beginning of the talk, just like small question. Um, what is uh, like your level of familiarity with this topic? How did you travel to this conference? Is it your first time at Europython or something like that? Um, also, I would suggest not to forget about eye contact. A lot of people are not comfortable with making eye contact and I believe it's part of the engagement actually. So don't forget about it. Pick people that you know or that you are comfortable to look at in different places of the audience and try to look to the left, to the right from time to time, someone in front of you. This uh, will help you a lot. Have friends in the audience if it's possible. It's always the best. Uh, works great for me every time. Um, about jokes and memes, I would be a little bit cautious here. I know it's like maybe we have different opinions on that. Just test it out. Be sure that it's not offensive, uh, people understand the joke because I heard a lot of uh, different types of jokes, just test it out. Uh, believe me, you you want to test it out before. And uh, yeah, if um, you did this minimum thing, I think your first time speaker experience in terms of engagement would be um, quite um, great. <laughs> Pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. Yes, very good point. Also, very good point uh, about the jokes. So, yes, jokes are a little bit edged. You know, uh, specifically, the same joke can be perceived different from different uh, people. So, I think, yes, uh, very good suggestion of testing the, the joke out and, and see that it is a, um, kind of, it's a kind of acceptable for the, for the whole audience. Um, right. Uh, I guess we can, uh, so time is passing by, so uh, I want, just want to get to the next two questions. Uh, Sebastian, so um, is it obvious that uh, this post, the post that you created, um, is has been created, written after a long experience in giving kind of uh, talks, conference talks. Have you tried to do things the opposite way in the past years? So do you remember any occasions where you tried things and they're going well? Um, so I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you here because I haven't, but I am like very curious if other speakers tried something and not failed miserably. So I'm looking for some other experience. Um, but like public speaking generally works the same. You go on the stage, you, you're there to pass the message. Like some people do this in a more entertaining way. So that's more funny. But like as long as you spend a lot of time on the research and you convey your message to the audience, somehow people will learn something and that that will be a successful talk. So I wouldn't say that I try different things and they fail, but I usually try to like pay attention to what I want to improve in my, in my talk. So I look at the people that I admire and I'm looking at things that I can improve. So for example, 
right now I know that I want to improve the design of my slides and for example the storytelling because like some people have started with like a really nice story I usually don't so yeah I have like some goals for my future presentations but yeah I'm, I'm curious if others have like things that they tried and they failed anyone to, uh, yes Sebastian the other Sebastian <laughs> yeah I definitely uh, tried some things that failed horribly so one thing that failed for me was writing out my entire text and trying to learn it by heart and then trying to um, just deliver that text just makes me very nervous I, I start stumbling over my words I start uh, restarting sentences all the time uh, just lose my train of thought so that didn't really work for me I tried it twice um, I do write out my text partially beforehand. I just make drafts to clear my thoughts, to get a nice story going, but I don't learn that text. I hope to know my, my story by the time I do my presentation. I probably go over it a million times when I'm out walking or just sitting on the couch or cycling or whatever. Um, so that didn't work for me, but I know that there are people who really like that and who can deliver a TED-like talk when they do have their text written out. So it's very personal. So find out what works for you. Uh, but it made me very stressed and I basically gave a very bad talk because of it. So, yeah. Right, thanks Sebastian for sharing your experience. Um, let's go, um, we conscious about the time. Let's go for the last question, Sebastian. And so, uh, your your post is 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 very detailed right so the, as i said at the beginning it covers everything so there are so many details and so many important things uh to understand to digest in order to uh deliver talk but if you have to pick three things or advices from from the post as advice to someone the who needs to deliver the first talk, which are those three things? Uh, only three things. Uh, mm -hmm. so, I think one of the most important thing is that people can either listen to you or read your slides. And the, that's kind of obvious, but the cool thing is that you can control that. So that it this doesn't mean that like wall of text is always a bad thing. It means that but, but wall of text is usually a bad thing, but let's say you have a quote from someone and you know that this quote is coming. So you just display the slide and give people a moment to read it. You can have a sip of water and so on. So by like changing the amount of text you have on your slide, you also change the pace of your presentation. You can have like one word on the slide then you can have a quote then you can have a bit of code then you can have a picture and so on. So like try to modulate the amount of text that you have uh, on, on your slide, but just make sure like, when you switch to a new slide with a lot of text, people will not listen to you for a couple of seconds. So just, just keep that in mind. That would be one thing. Um, second of all, um, figure out what's the purpose of your talk. Because if you want to like teach people something, uh, your talk will look slightly different versus when you want to like show them something. Because if you want to teach them something, you need to like um, repeat your key points more often. So you will to have an agenda where you will say okay this is what i will talk about then you will talk about then you will summarize things so you want these things to those things to stick with people and get stuck in their head uh, but for example if you want to show them something then and, and make them curious in in something then you probably want to do a bit more demos and so on so like think in advance what what what's the message and what's the outcome you want to get from your presentation that will be the second thing and um yeah, I want to get back to the live demos. Uh, uh, there was already a lot of great things said about the live demo, starting from Yuchiro's experience when he was a bit afraid and he did the demo and it went well. We also had some advice from other people. Um, so yeah, ask yourself if you really want to have a demo. And I I see that some people misunderstood that part of my article, like they, they thought I mean like you should not do live demo. No, I mean, there are some situations where live demo is perfect like if, and some people make like really nice really entertaining live demo so if if you want to do that sure but like you can present some ideas with screenshots you can maybe like record a short video of what's happening and at the same time you can like explain okay here we're doing this here we're doing that and so on like if you're doing like if you're doing live demo when you're coding you usually can't 
talk unless you want to do a lot of typos. So like there are some better ways if you want to like show the demo of your project and so on. And if you really want to have a live demo, like have some backup plan, have like some code on a piece of paper, have like separate branches in the GitLab repo where you can switch and so on. Yeah, and, and of course, like for uh, remember to increase the font size everywhere because I see like people having like a nice big font on the slides, then they switch to demo. And it's like tiny font and no one bothers to tell them. So like 10 minutes goes and the, like first two rows can actually read something. The rest of the people are like sitting on their phones. So just prepare for the live demo. Yeah, very good points. Thanks for uh, raising that. So you said uh, having a, a, a balanced presentation between text and images and codes and stuff. Uh, secondly, is the, the the purpose of understand what the purpose of the presentation is. If it's teaching or is a, a make a making people curious about a, a specific topic. And the third one is all about live demos. So very good points. Right, so thanks, Sebastian, for first of all for for the uh, blog post that you wrote. Uh, again, uh, it's full of details, and I bet uh, even uh, experienced speakers can learn from from uh, a lot from it. <laughs> it is a very well written. Thanks for that. Also, thanks for uh, spending uh, the the time with us today. So I think I think we can go to the uh, to the next. Uh, uh, so which kind of involves all the experienced speakers. So feel free to uh, pitch in and answer the, 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 a few questions that I have. Um, so uh, I think the first question I have is kind of, uh, which is kind of the base of everything, is how, how to design, design an effect, effective talk. So is... Uh, is um does anyone want to uh share suggestion can I, yeah can i can i drop something can okay. i i i think one of the so if by effective talk you mean a talk where you you put your point across and people understand what you mean then something that's very important is to not try and cram too much information into your talk because if you rehearse it twice, 10 times, 15 times, you'll know everything you want to say. Everything will be easy and obvious. But the people in the audience are hearing your talk for the first time. So often less is more. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Rodrigo. Uh, is anyone else wants to? Well, can I say something? Yes, of course. And uh, I think uh, many of you are already know that, already know that you know that. Well, your your knowledge is so valuable, important, and but I also want to say that the introduction of your talk is also so much important because you know audiences want to know why your talk is important for them. Like uh, so, in introducing from starting with some introduction of like a real world example real, real world problem that audience might encounter or something like that would be a good point you know good point to start with that's that it ah thank thank yeah. thank for you too <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i think i have one one thing to add it's kind of like similar to rodrigo and it's that um, don't try to put too many take-home messages in your talk. Your audience is not going to remember five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten take-home messages. It goes back to thinking about the goal of the presentation. Is it to learn something, maybe to, to showcase something, and then think about what is really the one, or what are the two take-home messages that I really want the audience to, to remember, and repeat them. So typically uh, what they say and might differ for you is that you kind of introduce them at the start and then you explain them then they, they, they come across in your entire presentation, but near the end you repeat them. And then by then they should have heard them three, four, five times, maybe in different wordings, but the repetition will legitimize your message, but they will also make sure that they remember it. They're not going to remember eight things, but one or two things that's uh, really feasible. Um, and then obviously that they'll 
remember bits uh, and pieces of other stuff, but think about what is the most important, what are the two most important things that I want to tell my audience and really focus on that, deliver those points. Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. Um, before going to the next question, actually, I've just realized that I skipped a very important date in the agenda, uh, which, he, which is actually questions from our first time speakers. So if there is any, any question for, for Sebastian or for the experienced speakers, uh, I think this is uh, your time to ask uh, any, any question for us. So I encourage you to raise the hand, unmute yourself and ask away. And why, um, why, why are you thinking? Uh, there was a question in the chat where uh, it was say, uh, are we allowed to use uh, IDEs like PyCharm, for example, in the context of product brand placements? So I think that the answer is, uh, so long as your talk is not about only the IDE or the software stack, and it doesn't deviate from uh, your actual topic, it should be okay. So there are no problems about that. Any question from the uh, first time speaker? Don't be shy. We are friendly uh, people. <laughs> hey, you know what? I can share this with you. So, um, I'm. I, I mean, like everyone, uh, I'm very kind of a uh, introvert, and and also. Uh, I feel stressed when uh, talking in front of people. Actually, asking questions is one of the way to break a little bit the high. So because the asking question is not that you need to deliver a presentation, but it's a way to, okay, I, I, I need to speak in front of people. So asking question could be a way to uh, kind of ease out the, uh, the, the to deliver a, a presentation. So you can use this occasion to ask your question. <laughs> I didn't convince you anyway, but that's fine. <laughs> so uh, I guess we can continue. We can continue have uh, other questions where or other points uh, to raise with uh, our experienced speakers. But at any time, raise your hand and ask away the question for us. So. I think uh, the, the next point is, what are the designs considerations while uh, preparing the slides? So I think uh, Sebastian already raised uh, a point of this, not to put too much text on slides and have a balanced, uh, uh, balanced uh, presentation. But if, if there are any other tips from anyone, uh, please share away. Increase the font size. Just increase it. You can increase it. You should increase it. Make it big. And if the text doesn't fit, it's because it's too much text. Usually. <laughs> Alena? And after you increase your font size, ask your audience if they still can see it, because maybe they still cannot see it, and increase it more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, my suggestion also connected to the, uh, please don't try not to make busy slides with a lot of text to try to follow the rule one slide one thought you need to understand what what you're trying to communicate with uh, this exact slide and it should be like simple and visible straight away. Uh, design wise, uh, try to aim for clean, simple slides maybe white canvas, black text, if you are not the design guru who can design like amazing um, slide deck, just keep it simple. I think it will be totally fine. And yeah, some memes and pictures usually work, but try to uh, attribute it, put the source of it uh, there and uh, make it super high quality if you're adding like any pictures, GIFs or something like that. Yes, um, another point is uh, is not just the font size, but also use high contrast colors. So uh, 
it's a kind of white background, the black fonts, for instance, try not to use uh, colors that are very similar. Be mindful also uh, of colorblind people. So if your if the color is key of delivering your message, then use colors uh, that um, colorblind people can understand, right? So um, these are kind of points about uh, colors and contrast. So maybe, just to, yeah. So just to add one more thing on top of what you just said, even if you don't have colorblind people, the, some projectors are just terrible and the colors will be completely off. So if you have, yeah, don't rely on like small color differences to rely uh, to, to convey important message. Yes, thanks a lot. Um, Teet? Yeah, I don't know how visible the um, screens are in all the rooms. I've, I've been in rooms where the bottom of the screen wasn't visible because it was a flat room. Everyone's, it's the people at the back can't see the bottom of the screen. So if that happens, uh, you're a Python, I guess it might. It's worth using the bottom bit of your screen to put your contact details. Um, and. and try not to go all the way to the bottom. That goes with the big fonts and not too many stuff on there, I think, as well. And to go with that, it's worth having your contact details on, on your slides, just your Twitter handle or email or whatever, um, because people will photo your slides to contact you later. Yes, very good point, Ibs, yes. Um, uh, yes, I've seen presentation where basically, yeah, the the the, the borders of the whole presentation were off their screens or uh, actually, try not to use any border. I would say <laughs> keep the the presentation centered in in the in the slides. Yes. Yeah, I had to do that last year. I was at PyCon US, and I think the bottom ten percent of my slides were not visible or something. So I I was so go to the room like uh, uh, Tony said, and I just quickly edited all my slides to be slightly higher, but it, it was, yeah, you just couldn't see them after the first row or so. So be really mindful of that and visit the room before your talk, if you're able, if you're not on the first day, first round, go there and just have a feel for it. Sebastian, you have your hand raised. Yes, I figured out how to do this. Uh, so one more piece of advice is that you you can skip like unnecessary code. So if you have like a code example and like user has to be logged in, you don't write like post request here, set cookies here, blah, blah, blah. You just write a function login user and people will understand what it works. So, so unless you like try to explain how to log in the user, you just replace all the unnecessary code with like a nice function names and your code will like shrink to the actual important parts. Yes, very good point, yes. Right, uh, another try to uh, encourage first time speaker to ask questions. Let's see if there is any uh, bright person. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Uh, I'm not sure if this is helps the right place to ask, but could you tell me when the order of the talks will be decided? Uh, I think this is more a question for the program team. And yes, I guess the, the question is about the schedule. So the short answer is soon, probably in one or two weeks tops. We have something that looks like a first draft of the schedule. Uh, we'll need to make adjustments to it and and so on, but uh, it will be published as soon as we can. All right, thanks a lot. Um, while we uh, are we here, is there any question that I missed in the chat uh, because of I'm not monitoring actively all the chat? Uh, if there is, just let me know so I can uh, repeat it. Okay, it looks like there isn't. So. I think I have another question. Uh, so I think we 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 talk about briefly uh, about engaging uh, with the audience. There were a couple of tips on uh, how to engage, but I just want to see if there are any more tips about this engagement with the audience from anyone.
I can go if no, no yes. one else wants. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have any anything very groundbreaking because I don't really I'm not really good at engaging with audience, but I noticed that there are like different levels of how you can engage with the audience. So like show of hands is the easiest thing you can like, hey, who's a first time at Europython or who used this library and so on. And like raising hand is easy. Asking questions is tricky. Like some people might not their hand. Um, some people won't, as Sebastian said, like some people will like just acknowledge the question inside of them and not express it uh, visually or anything. And then there are jokes as, Rodrigo said, like, they are often hit and miss. So it, it, it's a tricky thing. So I would say, like, try with the easy thing if you feel uncomfortable. Like, because when you're engaging with audience, you should also be aware that sometimes there will be, like, no feedback from the audience, especially if it's, like, after lunch and everyone is sleepy. So just be kind of comfortable with, like, not getting any answer from the audience and just move on. Yes, yes. Um, Alena? Yeah, but also be prepared that people can actually start answering you back a lot and you also need to be prepared and control it if if you like if people really, really want to share. So you need to be prepared to move this to after the talk part. Um, also, one one tip that I did and it is super easy and I think it can work for first time speakers also. I brought some special uh, swag with me just um, uh, I had it with me on the stage and I wanted to encourage people to ask questions after the talk. And I said, hey, I have actually this special swag with me and the best uh, questions uh, will get this swag from me. And uh, this is what I did to encourage people to talk to me about the topic more because I love it. So if you like it, you can also use it maybe for your talk. Thanks a lot, Alena. Yes, very good, very good uh, suggestion about this work. <laughs> Rodrigo? So, okay, so bribing the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have one thing that actually is related to Sebastian's question in the chat. So, Diego, then you can check the, ch the, the chat. One time I was actually watching a talk by Sebastian Wita Vitowski or Witowski, sorry. Um, and I actually liked how Sebastian handled a, a Q and a interaction. So there was this one individual last year that was not really asking questions, more trying to criticize the the slides. And I'm not debating whether the criticism was um, valid or accurate, but the way Sebastian handled it, I think was really great. Maybe Sebastian, do you want to tell us how you handle that kind of thing? Um, okay, yeah. Um, so I'm having a great strike of uh, my conference talks. Cause if you ask me last year, how is conference speaking going, I would say, flawless since last year i had like this one guy with a comment not a question i also had like projector dying in the middle of my presentation so now i'm getting the full package but um so regarding these difficult questions uh there are like different ways how you can handle those kind of people like the easiest thing is to try to tell to that person that hey we can like discuss it uh, after the talk because like there are like hundreds of people in the room. You don't want to waste their time on one-on-one. -on -one. So with this guy, uh, he was asking a question about some piece of code that was kind of like a pseudo code for uh, showing a um, concept. So I didn't really think it through. And he was saying, like, oh, there is a, some problem with that. And I kind of acknowledged that. And then he said, and in, we, if we go to the slide, blah, blah, blah. And at this point, I got kind of annoyed at this guy. So I asked, is there a question coming? And he said, no, and just went away. So it was a bit rough, but I was also a bit annoyed. And of course I was stressed. So there are like better ways to handle it, but you should kind of aim into like getting the questions that are useful to the wider audience, not like one-on-one -on -one code reviews on stage during EuroPython or whatever conference. The main the main key takeaway for me watching the interaction was exactly that. Just ask people to talk to you later. You know, if you think it's not relevant or not worth it for everyone else listening, just say, hey, maybe we can discuss this further after. Yeah. Yes, correct. I think it's a it's a wise suggestion. And I think this is very uh, uh related to um the question that Sebastian 
um, asked in the chat, how do we answer questions with the Q&A that are not actually questions, but criticism or arguments, I guess, point you made, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone else has a uh, suggestion on, on this, I would say, uh, anyway, uh, not think about the argument, but I'll say, okay, I, I take your point. If you want, you can we, you can find me after the presentation, we can discuss this further. I think uh, is the best way, is not to engage in the argument because as, as Rodrigo said, uh, you, you don't want to waste time of other people for their one-to-one -one, uh, discussion. Um, I wanted to share uh, something, but I, I, I don't remember what, <laughs> uh, because these, uh, the question, uh, this question came along. Um, is there any other question in the chat? Uh, uh, Diego, I think you're missing the fact that me and... Uh, ah, yes, yes, <laughs> carry on. Why don't we go? You're uh, the first. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to add that no matter what happens at the Q and A, some like it happens to be that people are criticizing you, or sometimes people can even be borderline rude. Uh, this happens, uh, unfortunately. Sometimes don't be rude back. Just remember being nice. This is your personal brand. This is your uh, face. Just uh, politely move all this conversation after the talk concluded and stay nice this is an excellent point yes <laughs> yes i i totally agree with it um actually I, um, rodrigo yes uh, uh, go next no i think i think what i had to 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 add was already said so no worries diego thank you okay uh the thing i wanted to share early was about the engagement with the audience uh, i remember uh it was some a few some a euro python ago i don't remember which one actually there was the the top of the engagement uh with the audience because there was this person i don't i, I don't even remember what the present they were was about but this person wrote as a kind of a, a web service and invited all the audience to go on the website and to vote in real time and then uh during the presentation actually the the the, the votes were kind of updated in real time and this was driving the whole presentation so again, this is kind of the top of the engagement whilst delivering a, a, a presentation. But uh, I would say as a first time speaker, don't do something like this because if something goes wrong, then uh, you are kind of uh, in a, so you need to be prepared in recovering if something goes wrong in that specific case, because this is kind of a mix with a demo and engaging with the audience because you have a live a, a web service running somewhere. So the network can go down, the service can die. So you, you don't have time there to debug things, right? So you need to be 100% sure that you have an exit route uh, from any problem that you might have. So this is again, uh, at the top of the engagement, but uh, the same message applies, having all uh, uh, an escape route, whatever things you do. Sebastian? Uh, just one thing regarding the questions from others, because I think we are sharing too many scaring stories. And the thing is that uh, just, and we have first time speakers, so just not to discourage it, this happens rarely that someone asks those difficult questions and so on. So most of the people know how to behave so that's one thing second of all if you have like a stupid or rude question most of the people on the audience are there with you and they they realize this is a bad question and that puts the people asking the question in the in the bad light not you so they they sympathize with you and last but not least if you're like scared of those kind of questions you can always say that you don't want to have the q a session you will say okay um just come talk with me after the talk i will be around but i won't be taking questions and i see a lot of people do that like even experienced people because they just feel like it you, you don't have to take the questions just take tell, tell the chair in advance Yes, that, this is a very good point. I don't know if we mentioned at the very beginning, but yes. Uh, so you you can say to the chair of the session that you don't take any Q&A, and that's it. Uh, 
um, and you're 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 fine with it. Um, yes, there are a couple of raised uh, hands. Um, I don't. I missed who raised first. Uh, Junior, uh, I hope I say your name okay. Hi, hi, thank you. Hi, I, I, I'm Junior. Uh, it's not a question. Uh, I apologize for my broken English. Uh, thank you for this uh, very valuable session. Uh, I'm attend. I'm attending Europython all by myself from Japan. I currently don't have any friends in Prague. Of course, I'm looking forward to talk session, but I even more excited about the opportunity to meet all of you in person. If you see around in Prague, please feel free to say hello or even reach out to me on social media platform like Twitter. Uh, Thanks, Junior. This is the good thing about the in-person conferences that actually we can hang out after the conference, having a chat, making new friends. This is, a, uh, I, I really look forward to being in Prague and I'm sure you will find uh, new people, new friends, uh, you will make new friends. So uh, this will be the least of your problems to, uh, to find new people there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I I, I'm excited, so excited. And you won't be alone these three days. <laughs> yeah. This is for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, Kalyan? Yeah, so I have a piece of advice here, like, you know, in terms of answering questions. So uh, let's say you always uh, should be, you know, be uh, honest and transparent if something you really are not aware of that particular question or something. So if you don't have an immediate answer to the particular question, so, you know, be honest and acknowledge uh, straight away saying that, you know, the question is fine, like interesting or challenging, but, you know, uh, and you can express your willingness to follow up more information on that later. And so that shows uh, that audience that uh, you have the humility and a commitment to provide more accurate information in the future. So, so always like, you know, be transparent and honest. If something you really don't know, uh, feel free to like, you know, acknowledge it straight away. So there is no harm in doing that. Yes, Karen, this is a very good suggestion. Thanks for, for sharing that. Um, I guess we are yeah, a little bit over time that we plan to. Uh, I think we can wrap it up here. So thanks for all the volunteers, all the, all the mentors uh, who uh, helped us running this mentorship program. Uh, thanks, uh, Yuchiro, even if he already left the call. Uh, and thanks, Sebastian, for, for your time, for the blog, for answering our questions. So I think, I hope it was a useful session for all the first time speaker. And I hope you can take away suggestion on how to kind of deliver a good uh, presentation. So I think, um, yes, uh, I think the last thing, the last thing I would say, good luck in preparing your presentations. And I guess see you in, in Prague. And last, last thing, ah, Tefanis, yes, uh, go on. I wanted to say thanks to, to all the volunteers and thanks to all the mentors because uh, this year we had many mentees and uh, when we asked them to if they could we get one uh, mentee, uh, one more mentee, they were all very, very helpful. And uh, for everyone that uh, wants help during the conference, uh, we will be there. Like, uh, so feel free to, to ask questions to the volunteers, to the budding desk, wherever. And I'm sure some experienced speaker or some someone with experience in talks they, they will they will help you. And uh, always uh, have in mind that there is also the session host. We have the speaker ready room and everything. Uh, that, that's and th thank you, Diego, for hosting. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, Alena, you want to? Yeah, say? yeah. I just wanted to mention that as I am from Prague and I'm super, super actually right now. I'm in Nuremberg, but I'm from Prague. We are super waiting for all of you in Prague. So if you have any questions or you are too stressed out before your talk, reach out. I uh, will help you with stress management before the talk. Feel free to. That's great. Thanks, Alena, for for your help. <laughs>
All right, I think we can uh, close it here. So, so thanks everyone for, for attending. Uh, the recordings will be made available at some point in on YouTube, so you can rewatch uh, things or part of the recording. So if we want to uh, go through a couple of concepts, and that's it. Thanks a lot for uh, the, all the volunteers organizing your Python. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye, bye everyone. Ciao ciao. You.